St. Peter. Dearly beloved, Christ suffered for us, leaving near you an example that you should follow his steps. We did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, did not revive. When he suffered, he threatened not, but delivered himself to him that judged him unjustly, who his own self bore our sins in his body upon the tree, upon the wood, that we, being dead to sins, should live to justice, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were as sheep going astray, but now you are converted to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And the Gospel is from St. John. At that time Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. But the hireling and he that is not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth and scattereth the sheep. And the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling, and he hath no care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. As the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. And other sheep I have that are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Wait for the announcements. So, uh, so mark well the visit of Bishop Williamson very soon, uh, two months from now. I am asking Father Ortiz, I'm asking Father Pfeiffer, Father Hugo, if possible, to fill in the gap. There's too long a gap of two months between now and the coming of the bishop. I'm very pessimistic about their answers because they themselves are completely outstretched, just like I am in, uh, in Asia, in the Philippines. It's a good sign, you know, more people are joining the resistance. But as for, uh, as for us priests, you know, it shows that uh, we are more, more and more stretched. It's very hard for me to get you priests in between uh, this Sunday and the, the, the next. No sign of Father Pico, you know, he is working on the faithful in Africa, uh, he's preparing them, and so it's up to him to decide whether he's going to uh, help us out here in Australia or to develop the resistance which is being born as well in Africa. From, from, that, from that side, there is no improvement. Uh, you know, the angel of Africa is fighting hard against the angel of Australia and New Zealand. Even if these are two angels, the angel of Africa is very strong. And uh, also, I will be back on the second Sunday uh, after the uh, second Sunday of August. So I will return on the second Sunday of August. So my plan is with Father Valan to alternate with Father Valan, so as to give you, you know, more or less uh, a priestly visit every month, because we need to establish a regularity of masses for you. So I will uh, alternate with Father Valan because neither Father Valan nor I are too far away from Australia. So the, the uh, etiquettes are fairly affordable. I'm fine. There is the etiquettes you know, that would land me in Perth, so I would arrive in Perth. Then uh, from Perth I would come on Friday, for the second Sunday of August, here. And then I would fly to Adelaide, and then I would cover uh, Stricky Bay. Then from uh, Adelaide, we'll go, uh, from uh, Suki we'll go back to Adelaide, fly to, to uh, Brisbane, and uh, say uh, the Sunday evening mass in Sydney. And since the group in New Zealand is still smaller, it might be bigger you know, once the Wilson visits the place, but yet now it's smaller, it's 15 people. Then I do uh, I cover New Zealand uh, as I exit Australia and New Zealand. So, you know, if other Valen agrees, that will be the the regular schedule, so you get the first Sunday of the visit, uh, and uh, we, uh, I come from uh, from Perth, which uh, you know we have we have great expectations over there, because the priest over there is very more liberal than the priest that we have here, that is a little militant liberal, and that's always has helped a lot the resistance, uh, helped a lot of people to open their eyes to the crisis in the society, just like. Father Hostan, Father Fluger, 
you know, these climbers are really showing where the society is going, unfortunately, and there is no change of direction. Uh, thirdly, yes, what an improvement of this place. Now, if some of you ladies could find or stitch a few cassettes for the altar boys. Now, there is a, a thermal which is coming to this place, and then I have another altar boy, a certified altar boy here. I hope one of these other boys can uh, help out for the serving of the mass. If you have a cross, you can have also a cross bearer, you know, it doesn't take any um, thought to you know, just carry the cross to come and then you stay here for the whole mass. And the cross bearer at the end comes back with the cross, carries the cross back to the sacristy. That would be a very nice to also have a cross bearer. And uh, I think I have an MC already. Third bearer is not difficult, so if you also young boys can move forward, but I don't have a thermal yet, so I, I don't have any excuse to force you to serve right now. And you can also serve without, even if the cassocks are not ready, I think you people understand our situation. So, uh, to improve this uh, chapel and, uh, and make it uh, nicer and nicer. Because we are here for the long run, my dear friends. Things are not improving. So, uh, 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 as they say, and uh, they are right, we are leading you out of the XSPX. As long as we don't still change of trend, we are leading you out. Now, the salient events of this year, 2014, is the promotion of Father Fluger into all the nominations of the society. That's appeared in the quorum, the recent quorum, that I haven't read entirely. But it's, uh, you know, officially Father Fluger. How can Bishop Fluger reward Father Fluger for this scandalous uh, stop the uh, retreat that he gave to the, to the brothers in the seminary of Flavien, in the district of Father uh, de Cacré, who is actually leaving the society to, and is joining the, the Capuchins in, uh, next October. But how can this doctrine be rewarded, um, which is so contrary to, uh, to the spirit of the Good Shepherd? Now, I will explain it to you later in the sermon. That's one thing. The, 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 the frugal gate. Now the other very salient event in, uh, that you must take note of at the beginning of this year is Father Jean Sermon. sermon. He gave a sermon, a wonderful sermon, which was very brave with the commission of Father Antoine, where you know, he uh, reproaches even Bishop Tissier, Bishop Galaretta, Father Nelly, Father Fruger, Bishop uh, Fele, you know, and uh, the general chapter. So basically Father Jean uh, repeats the basic tenets of the resistance, but he insists on the principle that started this crisis. That in no way can we lead you back to the wolves, to the Nobisodo. That's a principle. These people are heretics, and the principle that was always in place from day one is that we cannot have, uh, make our peace, especially in the canonical way, the canonical recognition, but even the recognition of tolerance that Bishop Fillet uh, evoked in his conference to the seminary of Zeiskov and, and elsewhere, and that which is very much uh, upheld by Father Fluger, even this recognition of tolerance is wrong, because we are at war against heretics, against their heresies. And so, there is a principle that was followed by all the saints in the, in the history of the Church. And as soon as he gave this sermon, Father Stelling stood and immediately re gave a rebuttal a public rebuttal, which was published in uh, all the official websites of the society, to say that this is not the official position of the Society of St. Pius X anymore. That principle of 2006 is dead. But the theme of this conference was a confirmation of that. You know, the general chapter itself is a confirmation of that. But each time you have a priest who still is in good standing with Mansingen, who says that, he gets a big hammer. Because they don't want to hear about this principle, which is a vital principle, that we are not going to reconcile with heretics. They are heretics. There is no choice to it. You have the regions of the, uh, the, region of the Antichrist is coming. That's what we saw again with those uh, canonizations last Sunday. It's obvious. All the more since the Nebus Ordo is not getting better, it's getting worse. So we are not going uh, this way. Now, the third thing that happened in 2014 is the publication of the acts of the uh, trial of, of uh, Father Pino and Father Stalinav. 
and the, the diverse scandals that are attached to it. But uh, there are, you have scandals that they broke into their private mail, they created a fallacious false identity, which is very great things to do. And also for the son of, uh, you know, when he was he went out, you know, to buy things outside, his confrere in the prior of Sion uh, got a hold of his computer, you know, as you know, the computer did not shut down. So he didn't have to uh, find the password. The computer was not shut down. So he jumped on his computer and he downloaded his private mail and he sent the private mail to Father Viu, the judge of Filipino and Sana, and Superior District of Switzerland. And so they, uh, they also removed his, uh, his uh, another time. So they don't seem to understand that uh, anybody has a right to his privacy, to his private mail. So to this day, they still not understand this. But this is not the main scandal in the Pino and Sala trial. The main scandal, which, was, which is very wrong, is that these two priests were judged according to the new code of canon law. That is, new code of canon law, there is a procedure which is the extrajudicial trial, canon 1720, of the new code of canon law. And this, this canon is an abuse. It is not in the old code. In the old code, when a priest is accused, the church considers that it's very grave and that this priest should be judged in front of five judges and be granted full trial. His own lawyer, which was denied to both Father Pino and Sanna, Father Piver was refused to be the, the, the lawyer of Father Pino, and uh, Father uh, Puga uh, was uh, not allowed to be present at the trial of Father Sanna. So Father Sanna had to read the paper written by Father Puga, which is not as great as in the case of Father. But you see that the traditional code wants to protect the priest. Now, if the priest is guilty, he needs to be judged and he needs to be punished. And that's a problem also in the uh, XSPX because uh, some victims had to call the police in order to arrest the priest last month. And that's, that's not good because the priest was not properly condemned by an accident. He should have been, but he was not. He was not arraigned, he was not tried because they are not following the guidelines of the old code of canon law. And that's why they are getting these problems other problems, or they have been punished for condemning innocent priests. And how can Bishop Lee say, he said recently, we condemn this new code of canon law, blah, 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 when the, uh, the, 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 he says explicitly in April 15 declaration that it still upholds, he says there that we will follow especially the new code. And Father Peter says that point of the April 15 declaration is put into practice. It is not that we, uh, you know, say uh, the April Declaration is there and then repeat over and again. That, no, this point, the last paragraph of the April 15 Declaration, is applied, is being executed. This is what we see. And that's the main scandal of this uh, penal trial. Our children never applied a single canon of the old code of canon law. And he told us to stay away from it. And he, and he erected the St. Charles Borromeo Canonical Commission in for, to provide a society to any tribunal society may require. This, not only the marriage tribunal um, and, and, and the other tribunals when they are necessary. Because we have human frailty, some priests are going to commit great sins, it's possible, and it's happening actually. And those priests have to be put away. And they have to be put away in the, in the right way, according to the laws of the church, which are not the new laws, because the new laws are arbitrary, even in the, on the penal side. Something that I discovered in my great ignorance. So, on these occasions, uh, you know, I went back to my books, and, it's very, and it was very instructive. Palopino himself said, you know, I, I learned a lot of things about the wisdom of the church in canon law in this, in this year of my detention. And so these are the three, I would say, the, the three major salient events. What's happening the latest is, uh, you know, there are other scandals, like Father Lamoron going straight to Madame Sordo, Father, the, Father Chambon in Bruxelles, uh, holding the theology of sexuality of uh, uh, Jean Paul II, and, and other scandals, you know, with liberalism popping up, but these are secondary. Those three uh, things, must stay into your mind. They show that even in 2014, there is the, the problem is still entire. And as shepherd, we cannot lead you 
back to, uh, to, to there because they want to lead you in the wrong direction. It's our duty to do what we do. And uh, if it means that we lay down our lives, well, that's uh, so be it. You know, it's, uh, it's a job of shepherd. I always told you, don't throw your life away unnecessarily. It's premature. Don't throw your life away. No, we throw our life away. If, it's, uh, if, if the case is made, we have to throw our life away. It's beautiful to see uh, you know, how Bishop Williamson was thrown on the street. He was told, here is the door, use it. He was thrown out. He started his resistance in a flat in London. Somebody gave him a flat in London. And I asked him, oh, but who is doing your cooking? Well, I, I'm doing my own cooking. I buy my groceries. And I, you know, I don't, I'm not eating that much. And I love cheese. <laughs> and, uh, but so, uh, you know, how do you take care of this and that? So you can imagine, imagine, picture yourself. Bishop <laughs> Williamson vacuuming his, uh, his flat in London for one year. This is what happened. This is, and I think it's beautiful. It's, uh, it's very sorry that those things uh, happen. And uh, other stories are, are like that. You know? Right now, you know, I have the joy to have my own spiritual director, Father Pivet. Two years ago, they tried to use him against me, you know, but you know, he backed me up two years ago. Now, his resistance, so he's got, he ain't got nothing, so he's appealing to France and France for uh, building his house, uh, you know, building a prior in France, and he's preaching. And uh, those priests who were thrown out, who didn't know what to do very well, and they were, you know, isolated, are now starting to go around and, uh, you know, taking care of the missions, like Father Chirois, who takes care of the north, northwest of the United States, northwest corner, where we have also a good following. And we see the priests in France are getting more active. And uh, they, did not throw their, they, they did not throw their lives away from nothing. It's just a job of a good shepherd. To, uh, to lay down his life whenever necessary. It means that the devil was not did not succeed in to destroying the Catholic Church. Because you have shepherds. And we have our limits, of course. Uh, you know, I wish there would be more of you here uh, today, you know. And if I, we are missing few people, it probably is by my mistakes and my lack of, uh, of um, holiness. But, you know, judge us according to. Uh, Overall, judge this group of shepherds to the overall results of what you see with your eyes. And it is a great joy for us to uh, restart this, uh, this adventure. We lament on this unfortunate phrase of Bishop Tissin Marai, who told, who told Father Pino, you know, you are right, you know, the declaration of your is wrong, this is wrong, your chapter is wrong, you are right, but you, 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 I am not a candidate for suicide. Be silent and find the notary, but we must tell the truth to our faith. We must warn them because you know this is serious and this is going to lead us to, to death. And we should see the answer to him I am not a candidate for suicide. And that's a terrible uh, thing to say from a shepherd, from a bishop, because we are in the hands of the shepherd and the bishop of our souls, our Lord Jesus Christ. And our Lord Jesus Christ has appointed bishop precisely to be episcopos. Scopus in, uh, in, uh, in Greek means to watch. Epi means around. The, uh, the bishop is a watcher around. Somebody who watches around. And when he watches and when he sees something, he has to speak. He cannot be a mute dog. He cannot say, I am not a candidate for suicide. Because the first order of business of a shepherd is the, uh, the laying down of his life for his sheep. That's the first thing that our Lord mentions. And uh, the other thing that the shepherd does is that he leads the sheep away from the wolves into the good, uh, the good pasture. That's why right. the principle for us is we cannot lead you under heretics, under this heretical sect which is reigning in Rome, this is a recent phrase of Bishop Tissier. Bishop Tissier dared to say recently that heretical sect that reigns in the, in the Nouveau Soul. That's why not all of hope is lost in Bishop Tissier. We still pray for him. You never know. You never know. Maybe uh, Bishop Tissier had great moments 
So he could, you know, one day he says, enough is enough, like Father Altamira said, I have been silent for too long and I'm feeling guilty. I should not have remained silent for so long. That's Father Altamira's beautiful declaration in Bogota. And so let us hope and pray that someday Bishop Tissier will do the same as Father Altamira. Because he does have very, uh, very prophetic phrases. But, you know, leading you to the good uh, pasture away from the walls. And, and there again, you know, in the Father Fluger's conference that you must read, very interesting. Father Fluger says, God cannot bless the spirit of those who say that since there might be a wall in the fold, we must join the sheep. We, we must not join the, the sheep. But, so the faithful told him, you know, on the internet at least, oh, wait a minute, if there might be a wall, we are sheep, don't we have the right to, you know, double check that there is no wall, you know, because we are hearing strange, no strange noise in the sheepfold. You know, something bizarre is, uh, is happening in the sheepfold. We are sheep, fine, but, you know, our job as sheep is not to follow like sheep necessarily. Because every comparison, you know, uh, leaves. Our Lord is giving the comparison of the sheep and the shepherd. And it doesn't mean that the sheep is going to necessarily follow anything blindly that the, that the shepherd is, is, uh, is saying. You know why? Because our Lord says it himself in the parable. He says, mine know me. I know mine and mine know me. My sheep know me. That is, there is in every sheep an instrument called, you know, gift of the Holy Ghost, gift of the, it's part, I believe, of the gift of understanding, gift, very important gift of the Holy Ghost. It's, a, you know, home, it's a front and four uh, uh, system. You know, all the planes, the war planes, they carry that system, front and four system. So when they come in a firefight, because they are fighting from so far away from each other, they have this electronic device by which they recognize front and four, so there is no friendly fire. And so in the sheep, there is also this device. In your hearts, there is this device. Just like in the time of Archie Lefer, you had to leave the uh, Novus Ordo hierarchy and join Archie Lefer because mine know me. That is, you recognize in Archie Lefer a shepherd. That is, somebody who was protecting you. And that's when you see the, you, what you see in Archie Lefer is this constant worry of a shepherd to build up the society of St. Isaac and to protect you with whatever you need from the walls. So, like, like when I said, you know, after the fair set up those tribunals, the goal of those tribunals is to protect you and to protect your priest from the Novus Ordo tribunals, to protect all your marriages from the Novus Ordo tribunals. Now that's why the, the French priests came to Flamini and they, they, uh, they, they um, yelled at, no, they didn't say that, but they, 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 they took on Bishop Filet, telling how is it possible that you were uh, getting our, our marriages, uh, trying to get our marriages recognized by the Novus Ordo Tribunals. How is that possible? Because by doing this, you, uh, you endorse a new code of canon law in the matter of marriage. And there is you know, the, the most obvious heretical part of the new code of canon law is the canons uh, of the new code on marriage. And Bishop Lee said, no, I, I won't do it again. Well, hopefully. But the, the problem is that in, the, in the, the fourth condition of the general chapter, the states that the society wishes only to keep the first instance troubling, leaving the second instance to the no soul, that is the final say on marriages. That will be necessary by the new code. And it's an opposite law. There is an opposition between the new code and the code of 1917 on the issue of marriage. We see it clearly by all the marriages that they are uh, annulling, which is an annul divorce or divorcement. Those are divorce, de facto divorces. And so we cannot you know, lead you uh, into, the, into the hands of the wolves. And Father, when Father Finger explicitly states that, you know, because the wolves are there, there is no excuse for us not to join. I mean, it's very surprising and it really tells us a lot. 
that um, that they are, are not so good uh, shepherds. And so these are the, the basic action of the, the good shepherds. And so it's it's uh, you cannot follow blind obedience today. It's not possible. And um, at the same time, you know, we uh, uh, I don't believe in the in uh, infallibility uh, of us resistance priests. We uh, there will be um, difficulties along the path. And our situation is not a normal situation. The shepherd has been struck and the sheep are scattered. But at the same time we see clearly that our Lord, you know, as just as God allows this scattering for some purpose, heresies have to happen in order to rejuvenate the church and this effect a separation between good and evil. You know, and then the good people are scattered into different folds. Like, you know, the Cinebacantis, I cannot follow the Cinebacantis position, but these, these are good souls, they would not have been scandalized had not the shepherd failed above them. But there's going to be a, another movement of reuniting everything under one shepherd. We are expecting, you know, the, the, the soul at the end of this crisis, the outcome of this crisis is the rebuilding of the shepherds of the Catholic Church, especially rebuilding of the Episcopal order. But there is a real problem, that's where the crisis started, with the demolition of the Episcopal order, the appointment of the wrong persons in the denomination, the wrong person, into Episcopal office. How that it was possible, except uh, uh, by this wrongful appointment of bishops in so many different countries. The surrender, it was a surrender that happened many years ahead of the council. The only one who clearly saw things in all this was St. Pius X. He said, you want to have secular humanist governments? Well, fine. In that case, I, I nominate all the bishops myself. And the French Republic was very frightened. Because St. Pius did that, and he appointed good shepherds. He, for instance, he appointed Bishop Ferdinand Lamotte in Nantes. And there was an immense revival of the Catholic Church in the 20s in Nantes. It, it was a you know, small diocese on the map, but they had uh, something like 400, 500 priestly ordination per year. The community, they had, in some years, they had so many priests. And, Bishop, and the same thing happened in other dioceses, where the diocese of Montauban. Uh, maybe I'm wrong for now for really 80 or to 100 ordinations every year. In Montauban was the same thing, they had great bishops. So this is a grace of grace for us today. We had a, a magnificent shepherd in, uh, in our church affair. It is pray that uh, Bishop Williamson uh, continues you know, what he's doing and uh, provides us with a, tra uh, with a transition, with, uh, with the bishops. Well, uh, he's talking about it, but our prayers must continue for that intention because so far it's not yet happening. Our position is still dangerous, still very frightening. And so pray very much also for that intention. And uh, welcoming as a shepherd, you know, try to organize you know, a formal meal here. You know, uh, you know, I hope he stays nearby here so he can, he can organize, take some rest. Nearby, yeah, after the mass, or after one hour or two after the mass, you can, you can have a formal meal here. Celebrate, you know, when you celebrate his coming, celebrate his fidelity and the fact that, uh, you know, we have not been left behind without bishops. Bishop or no bishop, we still have to do what we have to do. Because even without a, a, a bishop, we still have to tell the truth. The first cause of the church, the first formal cause of the church is the Catholic faith. But it really helps to have a bishop, to have something to, to hang on to sacramentally and, uh, um, and to continue the work of the shepherd of our modern times, which was uh, Archbishop of Fed. In the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost.